Hey everyone, in this video I wanted to show you how you can turn a environment that looks something like this, where it's very bland, there's nothing unique about the style. It's very much so an environment where someone's dragged in the assets and they haven't paid much attention to the post-processing. So even though I may have paid attention to the lighting, I haven't done much post-processing work. So how can we how can we go from having this type of scene into this type of scene? And that's what I want to show you. So we're going to cover my lighting process and post-processing process. Just to get these few things out of the way at the start, the assets in the scene, one of them is from Thunderance Assets from the Unity Asset Store, and he made this temporal prop scene, which is really cool. And the other one is Crystal Package by VD Games, which are a bunch of really nice crystals. You don't need to use these. I mean, these assets aren't exactly the hardest to make, but they're really nice, and considering that's free, and that's three dollars. If you need a bunch of crystals in your game, it's really nice. All right, back into the scene. I want to cover a few things. So first of all, the skybox is from um, a space skybox plugin. Oh, not plugin. It's a separate executable that you will be able to locate in the description. I have a tutorial on how to do skyboxes below. Um, the guy who did the video is really great, and it only takes 12 minutes, and you'll have you'll be able to make really great skyboxes. And what I want to get onto now is the light setup. So you'll notice I have my four lights around the outside, and my four gems, and my main point light, and my main gem in the center, which is my focal point. And I just want to quickly go through my setup for each of these lights. So first of all, the red crystal and the red light in the scene they all use a similar setup where I have the mesh and then I have the point light with its um, appropriate settings over here. And the advantage of having a blueprint like this over just dragging a point light in the scene is that I can adjust the settings for one within the blueprint, save it, compile it, then save it, and it will adjust and update them for all of the various gems in the scene, which is really nice. And if you want to quickly see the blue crystal, it's the exact same thing in the viewport, the exact same settings. The other thing I did was I have my material here where I plugged in the emissive color. Before I was doing a thing with reflections, so don't worry too much about the specular and roughness, but I plugged my vector three constant color into base color and emissive color that way it can kind of glow in the scene and light itself, which is really nice. You'll also notice that I don't have any point lights. So all of my lights depend on these gems, any illumination, and my gems are also not static. They are movable, making my lights dynamic. So if you have a look here, all of my lighting and shadows are dynamic. And what this means is I can't bake anything. So if you're familiar with having a light mass importance, using um, global illumination and stuff like that. I'm not using it in this particular scene just because I don't have static lighting. The next thing I want to go through really quickly is that of the importance, sorry, of having your shaders set up correctly. And let's have a look at this material. Really simple uh, for these. Now you don't get textures for the ambient occlusion, the normal maps or anything like that. You have to manually plug in your specular and roughness based off a constant value. So if you're looking for that, just constant. And what I wanted to achieve was having some of the light reflected off the surfaces. Not all of it, so I didn't want it fully reflective. I tried it before, it didn't look the best. So you, one thing I highly recommend before you get into post-processing is after you've set up your lighting, play around with the roughness and specular settings and metallicness if you want to do that as well. A massive part of making the scene look good is having the correct shaders and materials set up. Another massive part, as I mentioned before, is having the correct lighting set up. And the other massive part, the other few other massive bits, is the uh, having a good skybox, having your post-processing set up, and some ambient particles can do a really great job of making a scene stand out. And if you're wondering where I got this from, if I made it myself, in this case, I just used the starter content and went to particles and used the P underscore uh, ambient dust, 
which you can get and access from um, add new, add feature or content pack, content packs and starter content. So this is really great if you want some um, starter particles. And one thing I really like about this particle system is the change in color from being around the red light and being around the blue light. So these light colors, it's all about contrast. So when you pick your light colors, choose two that you feel contrast really well and then stick with those. The next massive part of this environment that adds, so think of it like this. You want to have really good art assets, really great texturing as a part of that. Then you want a really good material setup and a good lighting setup. And the icing on the cake for all of this is to have really great post-processing. And I don't have a lot to say about the individual um, post-processing techniques, but I'm going to walk you through what I did for this environment and how I got it to look like this. So color grading is one of the most important post-processing effects here. And how I achieved this particular look is all through color grading. If you have a look, without my scene color, and by disabling a lot of these features here, um, like these, it's drastically changing the look of the scene. And I'll just enable these back on. What you have to do is by default, all these are enabled minus the um, scene color tint. So what you wanna do, or if it's not, sorry, just tick it, but what you wanna do is just play around with the sliders. It sounds a bit silly going through this, but really, uh, most of the look for all of my environments is getting really nice color grading by playing around with these. Now, there is an alternative to this. You can go into, you can take a screenshot of the scene, go into Photoshop and make a color um, grading texture. So a lot. But in this case, I like to just play around with these settings. It's a, it's a lot of fun to do it in the engine rather than in Photoshop for myself. So what I recommend is spend a lot of time messing around with the global shadows and midtones and highlights and you'll be able to come up with a really unique and distinct look outside of just messing around with these sliders here and cha um, choosing the scene color tint which you don't have to do but you'll notice it makes a massive difference in how your scene can look so what i recommend doing is first adjusting all of your color grading options and leaving the scene color tint till last because I find the scene color tint has a massive effect on the environment. The next thing I like to do is I like to go into my lens. Oh, and by the way, if you want, you can adjust the tone mapping settings here, but I didn't use them too, uh, too heavily here. And the, the next thing I like to do is go into lens. And for environments like this, not every environment, but some environments, they really need big netty. Uh, you can see why here. If I don't have it on, it's very bright around all edges of the screen and in the center. And it really makes my lighting work look inefficient. It, it doesn't stand out. So by having the Vignetti up quite a bit, it makes my lighting stand out and it really gets rid of a lot of the brightness in the background. The next thing I like to play around with is Bloom. I'm pretty sure everyone's familiar with what Bloom does. If you're not sure if you have too much or too little, just get some feedback from someone else. And the other one is make sure to turn auto exposure off. And if you haven't done that before, just go up to your project settings, go down to rendering, and then you'll notice in the default settings, you can disable auto exposure by unticking that. I didn't want to have different exposure settings depending on where I was looking at this environment from. I just wanted the entire scene to look the same and be consistent. That's the reason why I turned that off. The other great setting that I have is um, Boca Depth of Field. So there's a lot. Of, there's three different Depth of Field settings, and in my case, I wanted to use this one. It's very subtle what it does. It is blurring out the background a little bit. Before the background was very harsh. Um, I'll see if I can show you. Uh, actually, I don't want to mess around with these settings too much, but the the background was very harsh. It looked a bit too detailed in comparison to these models here. It looked too realistic, I guess. And I wanted to soften the background, so I used a depth of field effect. And on top of that, I used 
my fog, which I'll go through in a second. But yes, the, the main reason I used up the field was for the background, just to blur it out a little. Not too much. And I'm there is a slight blur around these objects. It's a bit hard to tell, but the, the whole idea is that you're layering these effects on top of each other to get a really nice output. So the end image looks really good. So focus on not letting one effect overpower all of them, focus on them working together and getting a really nice final look. Now, usually I do use ambient occlusion and I'll use global illumination, but because I'm not baking anything, these effects aren't super useful in this case. And that's about it in terms of the post post volume. So yes, go through all the lens stuff and heavily adjust the color grading to have a really nice looking scene. But be careful. Um, if your texture artists or yourself have put in a lot of work into the colors, if you've been using Substance Painter or Photoshop, don't just override all the color work they did by drastically changing the color grading. Use the color grading to enhance the work of the artists. Don't use it as a way to just... Because the artists, if you say you're a programmer or you're doing the special effects for the game or the post-processing, if you just make the scene look completely different than the, what the artists envisioned when they put all the hard work into painting the art assets, you're undoing all their work. So just keep that in mind with color grading. I used a sphere reflection capture before I had um, reflections here, which I decided to get rid of because they looked horrible. And just to show you that really quickly, if I go into my mini temple material and let's turn down the roughness, I believe if I turn that down to zero and hit save, you'll see it's fully reflective. And I was just playing around with this before, but I didn't like the end result of it. So I put it to 0 0.6. So that's why I had that in there before. My crystals are slightly reflective. It's hard to see, so I left it in. In terms of performance, that's a horrible choice. But in terms of just having this environment looking nice, it's kind of fine to leave it in. Um, do remember, this is just an environment to showcase. It's not an environment for a game. Although this would work perfectly fine on PC and the state it's in. But it could be more optimized, of course. Um, I mentioned the particles before. And I mentioned the post-processing now. The final thing I didn't kind of go through was my fog and at first I met it might not make too much sense I mean it looks it looks quite nice without the fog but what I found after putting it in was that it got rid of the harshness so what I mean by that is the skybox has a lot of detail and I feel like it could be a bit overwhelming and it could also take your attention away from the the models in the scene when I put the fog in I felt like it allowed you to focus more on this, the assets in the center and less on the details of the skybox. That is the main reason I put the fog in. I also liked the color contrast of putting this fog color in. I felt like it looked really nice. So as long as you have a reason to justify your actions in terms of putting in effects, that is perfectly fine. If you are putting in particles and you can't really explain to your team or to anyone else, why you have particles, why you have certain lights in the scene, why you're using certain post-processing volumes, um, sorry, post-processing effects, then you have a reason to not use that effect. Before you tick something, explain to yourself why you're doing it. That way you can keep track of why you have certain effects, which is really good. Outside of all this, that's about everything I like to do in Unreal to make this scene look good. Um, now, do keep in mind, as I mentioned before, you will use different post-processing effects for different scenes. You will, in some scenes, build lighting, not build lighting. Some scenes will have reflections, some won't. You need to work according to the scene. So anything you learn here or in other videos, when you learn someone's particular method, use it with your own. Build your own style and take everything that is useful from everyone else and then um, just make your own kind of look in Unreal or if you use my Unity video um, in Unity or whatever game engine you have. So hopefully you found something useful in here to take into your own style of a visual look in your game. And the other thing I want to mention was that 
I'm going to be showing the process of how I made this, and I'm going to be doing a comparison video with Unity and Unreal. You may have noticed that I've actually done a video on this before. Not a lot of people saw it. Unfortunately, it wasn't super popular, but I've done a video on this before in Unity. I really like this version of the map though. So what I'm going to be doing is doing a comparison video of this environment and the Unity environment and discussing the troubles I had and the overall look because a lot of people want a comparison video. Anyway, thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'm going to end it with a showcase of the environment. And I'll see you in the next video.